I think that may be one of the reasons that we became, and it, it, it I'm, I don't want to be too presumptive. I consider him a friend. I think he considered me a friend. Uh, we talked often um, from the time I came into the astronaut office. Uh, you know, the thing, the big thing about, about being in the astronaut office was that you came into this incredible fraternity. Um, John Glenn was among the first people that I met uh, because he would come back like, like all the astronauts for their, their f annual physicals each year. And as a Marine, he would kind of seek us out and, uh, and do a little mentoring and a little coaching and a little pepping up and everything and wish us the best. And uh, so that was sort of the beginning of what developed into a, a multi-decade um, friendship. For me, when I heard that John was going to have an opportunity to fly, first of all, I was jealous uh, because I had left the Marine, I had left the, the astronaut office and returned to the operating forces of the Marine Corps. And at the time that he flew, I was actually in Japan, in Tokyo, Japan, at Yokota Air Base. I was the deputy commander of U.S. forces in Japan. And you may say, well, what the heck does that mean? John Glenn's airplane uh, that he had flown when he was on an exchange tour with Fifth Air Force at Yokota Air Base stood on a pedestal right there, and so I got to see it every day when I came in and out. And, uh, and he happened to have flown with Shaki Mukai. Uh, so not only uh, was there this connection of John Glenn to Japan and the people of Japan, uh, and specifically to Yokota Air Base, but to Shiaki, who was an, another very close friend. And I remember when uh, 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 Steve, Lindsay, Shiaki, John, the crew, came over to Tokyo to do their, you know, their visit, their post-flight visits. They were swamped. They were mobbed by people doubly because not only did they have their, their own Japanese heroine, but they had this icon of spaceflight uh, in, in Senator John Glenn. Um, he was 77, I think you may remember at the time, and that began uh, this contest between John Glenn and me when I told him how jealous I was, and he said, okay, you can fly again, but not until you turn 77. So I'm 70 years old today, not today, but I'm, I'm 70 years old at this time, and, and as he knows, he, he's, he still got me beat because I gotta wait seven more years be before I can fly again. His Friendship 7 flight um, put America back into the space. Not to minimize anything that had been done, uh, you know, by, by, by Alan Shepard or, or any of the, the two flights before him, but, but when, when John flew, we were going to orbit Earth. Um, we were going to, granted it was, we were second, but that wasn't important. For the United States, we were going to demonstrate that we were just as good if not better than our, our adversary at the time. Um, the whole world watched, and the whole world held their collective breath. Um, and it was just, it was very special for the nation to have, um, to have John Glenn become the first American who, who, who orbited our planet and, and was then able to talk about it. No question, he became a national hero. Never flew again because the president wouldn't let him fly. He was so valuable to the nation as this iconic figure that uh, we just did not want to risk uh, putting him back in space again, which did not please him. But, uh, but John, you know, is a typical Marine. He says, okay, saluted and went on. I didn't talk to, to Senator Glenn before the flight, but afterwards I had quite a few opportunities, particularly in Japan as we kind of reminisced and, and we talked about what it was like then, when he lived in Japan, uh, you know, during the Korean War, and now while I was living there some decades later, uh, and, and Annie, who I had not known before this. Um, but John was so typical. He didn't talk at all about himself. He didn't talk about the flight. Uh, he talked about, he always talked about the importance of we've got to get kids interested in, in this stuff again. We've got to get them interested in science and, and math and technology. And uh, I think some of the statements that you see uh, that people remember most from John Glenn, the senator, um, and, and post-senator when he went back and founded the, you know, the, 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 space, the Policy Institute on the campus of The Ohio State University. Um, he was focused on educating America's youth uh, to keep us the, the greatest nation in the world. 
the thing I don't want anybody to miss about, about Senator Glenn, John Glenn, Colonel Glenn, uh, astronaut Glenn, it doesn't make any difference what you say. The love of his life was Annie Glenn. <laughs> there was no mistaking that. You know, just to see the two of them together, the way they looked at each other. Um, I mean, for, for anybody who's contemplating marriage, uh, you, ought to, you ought to go to school on the Glens because they, they can teach us a lot about what unending love, what uh, undying respect and admiration for each other means, uh, mutual respect, because that, uh, there was never a question that Annie was the love of his life. And, in fact, you know, I, when I talked to, to Lynn, his daughter, a couple of weeks ago, because, you know, we've been kind of knowing that he was not doing well and that, that this day was approaching, um, I would always ask about her mom. And, uh, and, and as I asked about the senator, she said, you know, his, as sick as he was, he wanted to know how Annie was. He, you know, he was checking on her and, and saying, you know, she, she, you got to take care of her. Uh, he, that, that's, John, that's the John Glenn that I remember and shall always cherish. The person that, in my mind, never thought about himself. Um, there's a great movie that's coming out in January called Hidden Figures. And the movie focuses on, on a group of African-American women, uh, mainly Katherine Johnson, a not marginal figure or character in that movie is John Glenn, the Mercury astronaut. And, and what struck me so, uh, having been through life as an astronaut, was when they first arrived at Langley Air Force Base back then, the Langley Research Center, and they got out of their cars and they went to greet um, this, these throngs of NASA employees and everybody else, and there was this small group of African-American women off on the side who were the human computers that you'll, you'll see about in the movie. Only John Glenn. I mean, everybody else is going through the crowd shaking hands, and then they were hustled off to go to their meetings. John strayed off because there was this group of women that he recognized and must have been there for some reason. And he went over and introduced himself, and he shook hands with, with each of them and, and let them know, you know how important he felt they were. And, and he became a central figure in the story of, uh, of Katherine Johnson, who, who received the, the Presidential Medal of Freedom last year. That, um, you know, just to be able to connect the two of them as we were able to do last week, uh, who cared so much for each other and realized the importance of each other in their lives. John Glenn would have never flown had it not been for Katherine Johnson saying, it's okay. And Katherine Johnson would not be this national hero today had it not been for this, uh, this incredible Marine, this incredible astronaut, John Glenn, who took the time to go shake her hand, get to meet her, and, uh, and, and learn how to trust her and make her feel like she was a part of the team. John embodies, a, people always ask a lot of times, what, what, what single thing would you advise me? Uh, and, I, and I always tell them, uh, take care of your people and they will take care of you. Um, you know, it is, a, it is a dictum that we learn in the Marine Corps. Uh, we always talk about mission first, people second, but take care of number two and they'll take care of number one. Anybody who looks at John Glenn's life uh, will recognize that John knew that he embodied taking care of your people, whether it was as a pilot where at times he had Ted Williams, uh, the great baseball player on his wing in Korea, or whether he was leading Marines or ultimately in the U.S. Senate where he fought for people, many of whom he never knew, uh, but he, he thought, you know, their lives were important also. Uh, and then what he did when he went back home to Columbus and The Ohio State University, where he adopted as his focus for life, uh, bringing young people in to have opportunities to, to get to do and see some of the things that he had seen if they realized that science and math were critically important. Uh, that's the John Glenn that I hope people will remember forever. I'd, you know, John Glenn, the astronaut, I, uh, he, yeah, great. John Glenn, the humanitarian, John Glenn, the human being, John Glenn, the husband, you know, the loving husband. That, that's, what I, that's what I'll remember forever. I will tell my grandkids that this weekend a lot. Uh, you know, we'll sit down and, um, and, and I'll talk to them a lot about my friend uh, John Glenn and, and how he exemplified 
everything that we've tried to teach them and about about caring for other people and um, you know about putting putting others first and not worrying about yourself uh, knowing that if you take care of other people then then they'll take care of you that that was John Glenn that's the that's the John Glenn that I know and that's the John Glenn that leaves an Annie behind um, who uh, wanted to go to the grocery store today <laughs> you know so that she'd be ready for people to come over to the house that that's those are the Glens.